The August 10th, 2020 meeting of the Rockingham County Planning Board will come to order. At this time, the chair recognizes Mr. James Harris for our invocation. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that we can assemble ourselves for the August 10th Rockingham County Planning Board meeting. Be with us tonight as the case is reviewed. Help us to make the decisions necessary and beneficial for the applicants and the county and all members of Rockingham County. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Planning board members, if I could direct your attention, please, to the minutes for October 19th. October 28th, I'm sorry, 2019, these minutes need approval. Mr. Chair, I'd like a motion that we accept the minutes as written. The motion has been made and seconded to accept as written the minutes of the October 28th, 2019 minutes. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. And now if we could direct your attention to the uh, regular meeting minutes of July 14th, 2020. These minutes also need approval. motion has been made and seconded to approve the regular meeting minutes of July 14, 2020. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. There being no opposition, the motion carries unanimously. The following are the procedures that the Planning Board follows for these meetings. Any and all persons who would like to speak regarding any case being heard by the Planning Board must sign the case file roster prior to the beginning of the meeting. Additionally, each speaker must be recognized by the presiding board member prior to speaking. Unless otherwise specified, all testimony, evidence, and comments should be directed to the board chairperson or presiding board member. Each case will be presented to the board by a member of the planning staff. Following the staff presentation, the case applicant will be given the opportunity to brief the board regarding the case. Following the applicant's presentation, those who have signed up to do so will be granted the opportunity to speak against or in support of the proposal. If needed, the board chairperson reserves the right to set time limits for each speaker. After the public comment period is completed, the applicant will be given the opportunity for rebuttal. This will be followed by board discussion, motions, and voting procedures. At this time, uh, the chair asks that the rezoning case 2020-21 be presented. mixed to highway commercial conditional district conditional district offers the opportunity for the applicant to um, suggest conditions in this case they have recommended uses that will not be prohibited should the zoning be approved parcels located just south of Reedsville a uh, just over two acre 
property, two and a quarter acre property, previously operated as a mobile home park, or a section of the property was previously operated in that way, in that manner. The property lies within the economic development land class. The purpose is to encourage a transition from urban or from rural to urban in areas like this. A little bit closer up view of the property. The um, applicant is requesting rezoning of everything but a very a very small cutout that you see here that is a a parcel that has an un unclear disposition. So they are requesting everything outside of it. I've given uh, you a little bit more detail on growth management strategies in the staff report, and if you had a chance to, to read it, mm -hmm. <clears throat> with the um, strategies that are relevant to the case concerning transportation, um, retail opportunities, growth management, commercial development, community appearance, and residential development. Are there questions for me at this time? Is that little notched out piece, is that say cemetery? It is labeled as a cemetery. It was apparently created, platted in 1937 as a, um, a set aside intended to become a family cemetery. And that plat just is labels it labels it as not for sale or do not sell, um, and so that disposition is really what we know about the property. The property owners have some more information about it, um, not really relevant to the case because they're not asking for that parcel to be rezoned. Okay. <coughs> 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 I have a question. Um, Carrie, how far is, this is on um, U.S. Business 29, how far from U.S. 29, did you, did y'all measure how far that is from the actual interstate? I did not. Emily, did you happen, you don't happen to measure, did you, yeah. We can do, we can find that out for you. And I'm guessing, knowing where the ETJ is, looks like at least a few miles to the south. So you think it's over? Before over it enters, I, that's what my guess is, Emily will get that for us. Are there more questions while she's looking that up? Oh, are you hearing that we can't? Is that from me or from the board? Is everyone's microphone turned on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everyone's microphones are turned on? Yeah. Okay. How did you get that distance? To, um, to highway or inter what will be Interstate 29 to the south. If you follow 29 business down to where it intersects, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and if you may, Paul, when, when you've opened the hearing after hearing from the applicant, when you are ready to receive um, comments, I'm happy to read the one comment that was submitted by writing okay. into the record. We'll put that one at the end of the end of the speaker. Mm -hmm. Just to give others a, an opportunity, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just ask that so that there's a rebuttal opportunity. Five. I heard her. Oh, one and a half. I was wrong. Mm -hmm. it was, it was close, a lot closer than I thought. Okay. I was going to be surprised at ten. Then you're about a mile and a half okay. from the intersection. Thank you. Carrie, looking at the, um, the current site for the two parcels included, how many driveways were currently used to access both parcels? 
It's a, Emily and I were just talking about this because it looks like there's a, a cut through has been established there at some point. The best thing to say, to, the best way to answer that is that under site plan review, DOT will be looking at this and will dictate how many resultant driveways there can be, whether or not turn lanes are appropriate. I'm going to ask them to, to look at that um, cut through ability to either allow or not allow it. Um, it, it is that, does that help answer your question? Because the existing driveways are, are not going to be relevant. It'll be based on what NCDOT will allow. But in the past, I guess, just looking I at think everything there's the, I think there's two, there's that two driveways here. Off of 29, business 29. Yeah, two driveways, well, two, a turnaround driveway so, off 29, and then a driveway here off of um, Mizba. And then I guess there was another driveway. Up here, maybe? Where the mobile Oops. home park was, right? So yes. I'm not sure exactly right where it is. At the north yeah. end, okay. But, and I, and I think um, the developer understands that they'll be, um, if they haven't already had a conversation with NCDOT and they, you can, um, chances are pretty good they'll tell you that when they get up to speak. <laughs> if they have. <laughs> Any other questions for staff? And I'll, I'm here to come back for more questions if you have them. Okay. All right. Uh, we have a fair number of speakers tonight, so um, I'm thinking we're going to limit your time to speak to uh, five minutes or less. And even at that, it's going to take over an hour to hear everybody. We're playing to a full house tonight. Paul, you can offer if anyone, if anyone's concerns have already been um, represented, that they please state that for the sake of time. Right. <clears throat> if you're in agreement with uh, what one person has either objected to <clears throat> or is in favor of, when your turn comes up to speak, just signify that you're in agreement uh, so that we don't have a redundancy of comments. We will take note of the multiple comments, right. so not to discount that. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Daniel Almazan. For the record, sir, please state your name and address. Yes, uh, my name is Daniel Amazon. I'm with Terramore Development. And we, we have the application for rezoning. Uh, thanks, Carrie, for, uh, for doing a good job, especially explaining what's, what, what we're, we are applying for. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to have uh, Laura Prance, our attorney, go through some information, so I'll make this quick. Uh, basically, we've got a 9,100 square foot Dollar General that we're proposing for the area. Uh, something that's important is is that this creates about a 1.3 million dollar uh, investment in the community. Uh, that that will end up being the tax base. Uh, annual sales usually for this size store in this area is about 1.2 million, and uh, they provide between seven and ten full and part time jobs. Uh, I, we had uh, just a comment about DOT. We actually had uh, reached out to Jason Julian, sent him a site plan for review, and, and he gave us feedback. So we do have a, a left-hand turn lane on 29 that's proposed. And, uh, and we, do, we will have two entrances, one on um, uh, Misba Church and, and 29. Um, I'm trying to think of, of anything so that um, I know that uh, we, we want to do a quality project, and I think, Carrie, did you include in their package what our proposed uh, facade was going to look like? No. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't believe that we did. Okay. But you, it's, you're welcome to, um, to, show, to show it if you have. We'll, yeah, I'll have Laura bring up the copies uh, to distribute, uh, because what we're looking at is a, a three-sided masonry construction, uh, and so, this is uh, upgraded, not just a metal building. We really want this to be a nice project, and, and we've had a lot of success in other communities. Um, I know that uh, a lot of times, because we have a lot of members from the community are concerned, I'm, I'm going to uh, 
let them speak. I'd like to come back and maybe address some of those concerns and give you time to ask me some questions, maybe if there's some specific things you have concerns. Any questions now? No, we'll reserve our, our questions for uh, the conclusion of your rebuttal. Okay, thank you very much. <coughs> Dan Daniel, did you happen to email that to Emily or myself? And if not, if you do it right now, Emily, I could probably get it up there. Okay. If you email Emily. Laura Kravitz. For the record, please state your name and address. My name is Laura Krantz. Uh, my address is 100 North Green Street, Suite 600 in Greensboro. Um, I'm an attorney on behalf of the applicant. Um, we also have Derek Goddard here, who's the engineer for the project, so he can speak to um, some of the specifics as to the site plan. Um, I have four color copies of our uh, proposed facade, so I don't know if, if Daniel's able to email that or if this is helpful to, I'm so sorry I don't have enough, but um, I'll give you some idea. Um, like Daniel said, Carrie did a great job summarizing the, the background of the property. Um, we have proposed several conditions with the application uh, for limiting the, the use and then we'll also have some development standards um, we'll comply with all of the standards set forth in the zoning ordinance which would be the buffering the landscaping setbacks all of that um, Terramore is actually a preferred developer in the southeast with Dollar General so they um, are very good at what they do and they have a lot of experience um, they're quality developments with quality materials they manage and um, manage the property and own it so it's something that they're very um, involved with throughout the development and then the, the ongoing running of the property um, the adjacent surrounding parcels mostly um, are commercial industrial and agricultural and as the staff report notes we believe that the location of the property at the intersection makes it better suited for commercial use than residential um, so we would we would agree with the, the staff recommendation that um, that recommends approval, um, especially with the the conditions. We believe that that'll provide um, ample opportunity for it to conform with the the zoning ordinance as well as the land use plan. So, uh, if you have any questions for me, I I can answer those or, or call upon Daniel or or Derek. Any questions for Ms. Krantz? I do. Uh, Ms. Krantz or um, any, of, any of the ones that you brought, um, what type of traffic flow do you anticipate in and out of this, this store every day? Like what kind of, how, how many customers do you think will come in at any given time? Daniel would probably be better. I, I think from a, a general perspective, I know that the Dollar Generals are not, they're low traffic generators. They pull from existing traffic, um, so it shouldn't increase anything. I think Daniel can give you specifics as to the number. It's a great question. A lot of times people are worried that it's going to really create a lot of congestion or extra traffic. Uh, because Dollar General has about 16,000 plus stores, they, they've got a good history to pull from. And even in North Carolina, we've had studies done. Uh, basically, traffic will increase uh, typically between 2 and 3 percent of the existing traffic count. And, and I apologize, I don't have the, the accurate traffic count at this time, but we could calculate that in terms of a daily average. It, in terms of uh, like a hourly, you'll see peak times where that 17 cars at one time would be about the max that we see. And actually in this area, it wouldn't, wouldn't typically be that because those are more urban stores. We see those, those kind of numbers. And so I'm just trying to give you a worst case scenario that you might see uh, 17 cars, but that would, that would be uh, eight o'clock to about nine o'clock or those five to six, because what we do is we work off the ex existing traffic count. Those cars that are coming to and from work, to and from school, uh, they stop in, they do that, it's on their normal route. So hopefully that answers the question. Um, yes, and what kind of products will typically be sold in this particular store? Is there a specific plan or is this gonna be? Julie, I have to suggest that we um, limit questions to what's relevant to the actual zoning and what would follow the ordinance or land use plan. 
Just so that you know, uh, North Carolina Department of Transportation estimates that there's 7,200 vehicle trips by that location every day. Okay. All right. So, so that's uh, and and the hours. And the hours of operation are 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And it, Julia, to be fair, if you have questions about things that are regulated by zoning, such as ABC. No, no. Okay. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to sort of figure out what the impact to the community. Under, understand. Yeah. yeah. That's that's the only not not any specific business model, but what kinds of things will impact the community. Um, it would be okay to describe generally what the yeah. product that, is, and then we that, can those determine. Those are questions that, that, that the community members are going to be asking anyway. It's, it's very valid. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, um, this piece of property is, is a little unique in that um, there's a, a wedge. Right. Um, and do you, um, if there's going to be, um, can you describe where, where the driveways are going to be and what, those, what they're going to be used for and sort of tell us what the site will look like? Sure. Well, in fact, I tell you what. Since uh, in order to give some other members uh, you know, of the community a chance to speak, let me email Emily a copy of the site plan because I, I thought maybe it was included in the package, but if it's not, we can have it up on the board. That way you can see it, and I'm, I'm assuming on your screen. So just, it, but just tell, how many driveways will it, there be? Two. There yeah. will be two driveways. Yeah. Yeah. One on each highway, I think okay. you said. One yeah. on one on Mispa and one on 29? That, that's correct. So, well, the one on Mispa um, is the point is that going to be a different type of driveway or is it just going it's, to be access to the store? Yeah, yeah, just access to the store. And, and actually, I, I see from the site design, and maybe Derek can confirm that. Uh, actually, I, say, I think he's next on your list, so why don't I, I'm going to defer that, that question to him since he is the, the engineer for it. Okay. okay. Then we'll hear from Does anyone have any more have questions? For, I just have one quick question. Is it just the Dollar General itself, or is it going to have any other? No, uh, it's, it's the Dollar General only. It's freestanding. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned the traffic, and was this statistic sort of based on all opening of Dollar Generals, or, you know, like not long ago, was one opened on uh, Highway, Highway 58? Mm -hmm. Is it? Is this a, sort of a generic? That's that's a study that was done on, let's see, in fact, I can forward that as well, but that, that was done, uh, a traffic study that was done recently, and it involved uh, hundreds of stores in North Carolina, so that we had a better average. Okay. Because I, I know, obviously, every site's specific, and some will be, impact more, but, but what we try to do is just take the highs of, of all of that average. So that the we same can, question was brought up when the uh, store was open on 158. Right. Uh, about traffic in, traffic out. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, and let me follow up on that. Um, do you anticipate these? The, the store is going to have to be replenished via a truck. Yes. I'm, I'm assuming. Um, do you anticipate there will be, like, where that'll where that loading and lo unloading will be? Yes. Uh, in, in fact, we we know what the design is. I was gonna. I don't want to steal okay. his thunder. Okay. <laughs> So, Derek, I, I guess that's a good segue. <clears throat> All, right, All right, we'll hear from Mr. Goddard now. Thank you, and if, if I need to answer any more questions, I'm available. Thank you. For the record, sir, please state your name and address. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. My name is Derek Goddard with Blue Ridge Environmental Consultants, or Breck, in Wilkesboro, North Carolina. It's 1502 Meadowview Drive, Wilkesboro. I appreciate the opportunity, and, and I'll be as brief as possible. I think most of the questions that I, I can shed some light on as far as access and, and driveways and these type of things. Um, I think it's important to, to know and, and to remember that the North Carolina Department of Transportation regulates uh, uh, access to properties for commercial uses, and so that's called a driveway permit process that we'll have to procure. But as uh, any smart developer would do, uh, those can be limiting factors in development sometimes, uh, where the driveways are and how the site's access. So the first thing we do really in our development process, we consult with the county, and then we consult with the Department of Transportation. So here we've consulted with Mr. Julian, as has been mentioned previously, with the Department of Transportation. And uh, he's actually went out on the site, and they have a traffic manual. And you, you, quoted, the, uh, you quoted the trips, the number of trips there already. And so they take that number of trips and they determine what's, what's, what's an appropriate turn lane width and a taper. And so uh, 
if you're coming from the intersection of Mesba and, and Highway 29, there's going to be approximately, um, uh, between turn lane and taper, approximately 350 feet there uh, of, of, of road improvements before you get to the proposed store location. Then there'll be an access, and then there'll be also another uh, uh, symmetrical widening uh, further down of approximately uh, 250 feet in that area. So it's a pretty significant expenditure the developer, developer's going through here to, put, to make this safe, uh, to make it accessible. All these, uh, all these turn lanes are, are designed for truck traffic. I mean, they have appropriate radiuses, they're wide. Um, uh, it also means that the, the landowner here is, is actually giving up you know, some of the property uh, to install these because again when you widen the property you widen the right of way if you will so there's, there's significant um, I guess impact to the property owner as far as expense goes time permitting design those kind of things so um, as mentioned there are two driveways here there, there's a, a full motion access on, um, uh, on 29 and then also on Mespa uh, Church Road the, the extent of those driveways will probably, and the way they're stacked on the site, will probably limit cut through traffic because it won't be as easy to zoom through there. There'll be traffic and, and parking and those kind of things. So I think that'll cut down on some of the, some of the cut through considerations. Um, the front of the store will be oriented on Highway 29. The rear will be oriented on Mesba Church Road. And all the, uh, the truck deliveries and the loading docks and the, uh, the dumpster will be located in the rear of the store um, as typical of, of a Dollar General site. So uh, th those are some of the technical aspects of the project. Uh, I've been involved with Terry Moore Development for, for a number of years. We've, we've developed well over 100 of these sites for them and, and uh, uh, they're one of the best when it comes to Dollar Generals and so uh, I think it's a, it's a good partner to have in Rockingham County and um, they uh, <coughs> They follow through with not only the development, but the engineering, you know, we were a team, if you will, and all the way through the construction. So that they have kind of all that in-house and the same team that does these projects. So uh, with that, I'll answer any questions that you have about the project that I know uh, or any kind of technical aspects that I can answer. Any questions for uh, Mr. Goddard from the members? I'm going to back up and re-ask my question about, okay. um, say, truck entrance and delivery and what what that site what that would look like on the site mm -hmm. so uh it's hard to point out here without a site plan but i am I'm, I have it. I oh, it oh, perfect okay that'd be great Mm -hmm. We haven't recognized it yet. It, it will in a second. Is it in one of the Mm -hmm. There we go, it's on the same path. So we have mm -mm. this is this is the part too when I remind you that Do what? So this is relevant. Oh yeah. Well, it still has to pass the uh, technical yeah, yeah, review committee. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, I should put the other one on there while I'm at it. Thanks for your patience, guys. I really yeah. do appreciate it. Somehow I, I did not have these previously, but 
that was probably an error on my part. But let's see. There we go. And then if you if you want to click to the next one, that's the facade. Okay. Yeah. This this is this is the one I need here. Um, so if you can see the, uh, the the rectangle to the to the far right of the property there, that's the uh, proposed Dollar General store. And then if you look, I don't know, does cursor work here if I go over this? Mm -hmm. Can you see the cursor? Okay. So th this is the driveway here on Highway 29, if you can see the cursor there. And then uh, here's the driveway on Mesba Church Road. The loading dock is back here. So both of these accesses are accessible via truck. Uh, you know, it's hard to predict how an actual truck route driver is going to come in here and, and go in this. I mean, I, um, I think it probably would vary, but... Uh, I could, I could actually see a truck driver coming in here and kind of turning in and then backing in here. I mean, these, truck, these trucks come in late, you know, or early, and they're not there very long, and they get frequent, uh, you know, deliveries. I don't Daniel can probably comment on what that, what that delivery schedule looks like. But, uh, I mean, both of these accesses would certainly be accessible to trucks and, and um, would potentially be used by trucks. And, and now that anybody can see the plan, does anybody have any questions about the plan itself? dumpsters um, right here in this area as well of course it'll meet the highway highway 29 is across oh. the bottom of the sketch oh sorry to orient yeah there it is right there yeah yeah the cursors <laughs> eluding me sorry about that elusive curve. okay does anyone have any questions regarding this site plan or for mr goddard um Paula would suggest when you, if this is being offered as a condition and it's included in a motion, that you make it contingent upon staff review of the, uh, site of the site plan. Since I haven't had a chance to see it yet, and I'm sure, yeah. Well, this will still have to pass the TRC, also. So. Yes, but that's that's what I mean. Just but to, um, just to clarify that that'll be. I don't want to. I don't want to confuse things that we're accepting. It, as is, it's a condition because it hasn't been reviewed. Okay, so this site plan is simply being submitted for. I rezoning. believe it's a condition of the zoning. Uh, conceptually, it's a condition in its conceptual uh, phase or uh, state, and it will be reviewed by TRC. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is Mavanda Anderson here? Hi. For the record, please state your name and address. My name is Miranda Anderson. I live at 167 Mispa Church Road. And what is it that you would like the planning board to know? I live directly across from 1401 US 29 Business. Um, I'm against this Dollar General being built right in my front yard. Um, I have multiple concerns, one of them being if the Dollar General is um, passed to be built, the water runoff from the cut through road directly into my driveway. Um, I have pictures, um, if you'd like to see them, of what we're dealing with now from the runoff because it's a downward slope. Um, another issue that I'm concerned with is traffic. There is a lot of traffic down 29 and Ms. Church Road. And you have multiple, you have a business at the beginning of Miss Church Road, you have Speedway Drive, and there's multiple residential driveways there. Um, I'm not sure how a large truck is going to turn into Miss Church Road entrance for the Dollar General store. Um, with the traffic increased coming to the store, I have small children, um, people walking to the store, and again, increased traffic, I'm concerned for their safety. There are five dollar stores within a four mile radius of this property already, and there are seven within 10 miles of this um, location. Um, I'm not sure exactly why we need another. Um, there's also a, a cemetery there. I'm not sure if people are just supposed to ride around it or park their buggy up against it. Um, the trash, 
flowing from the store over to my property into the ditches and driveway that I work so hard, my husband and I work so hard to keep clean. We're concerned about that. Um, if, of course I'm opposing it, but if it is passed, I would like for a buffer um, to be considered um, and hopefully no entrance from the Ms. Church Road area, which is directly across the street from my, my um, driveway. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Anderson? Thank you. David Anderson also signed up to speak. For the record, if you would state your name and address, please. Good evening. My name is David Anderson, 167 Ms. Church Road. Okay, and what is it that you'd like the planning board to know? If we could bring that picture back up of the uh, overhead, like the uh, GPS photo, please. Notice, like my wife mentioned, the Mispa Church entrance and exit that Dollar General is uh, recommending. Sir, it's closer than me to you from my driveway. Um, I have a one year old and a 10 year old. They speak of uh, their property management. I would challenge anyone in this room or county to ride by any of the dozen or so Dollar Generals that's already in it and look at the abundance of trash <clears throat> in the parking lots and their shrubbers. It's not maintained. I don't want to have to pick it up. I already get it from passerbys. You talk about traffic. I work in law enforcement. There are no less than 100 cars a day that come by in non-peak hours. Flying up and down the road, this isn't going to help that. As you, as you are taking into consideration as to whether or not you approve this, I'd like you to take a moment to think to yourself, if it was you and your family living there, with everything you do in life to provide your family a nice home, would you approve it if that was your address and your kids playing in that front yard? When this door gets robbed, where did, where's the first place you think they're going to go? Right into my driveway. I have very serious concerns for the safety of my family. The buffer or the area that they're talking about clearing it's Rockingham County, it's a rural area. Mispa Church Road is a residential area. The land that we live on is part of my wife's family farm. We're the fourth generation to be there. The reason we bought that home was to live in that rural area, to provide our children a country atmosphere. If we wanted to live next to a Dollar General, we'd go pick one of the five or so in Reedsville, or Eden, or Madison, or Mahan. I have concerns for my safety mostly of my family. Not only that, should we ever decide to sell, again, I'll ask you, you, if you were looking to buy a home, would you do it with it staring in the back of a Dollar General? I wouldn't. Thank you. And, oh, hold on, sir. Any, qu any questions for Mr. Anderson? I do. Mr. Anderson, how long have you lived at this property? I've lived, I just bought this property back in December. Um, and how far would you estimate from the road your house is? From, football from field, the, half uh, the football field? Oh, no, it's not. It wouldn't be 100 yards, maybe okay. 70 yards. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Michael Exum. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Sir, if you would please uh, state your name and address. Beg pardon? Please state your name and address. Uh, my name is Michael Edson. I live at 161 Pierce Lane. Okay. And what is it that you'd like the planning board to know? Well, <clears throat> first of all, what I'd like to bring is 
reasonably already have four Dollar Generals. I mean, how many more Dollar Generals can <laughs> reasonably need? And the second thing is, uh, if that Dollar General open, Paul might have to close his door. That means he's going to have loss of income. He can't pay his bills. He can't do that. He's a small businessman. And most people let the big bucks kind of shut the small businessman out. That's probably what happened to Paul. I mean, he got to eat. He got to do it just like the rest of us. And one thing about it is uh, you have to have a soul. Sometimes you have to have moral, moral values in your body. Sometimes don't sell your soul for money. Sometimes think about the little man. <clears throat> think about what he'll go through. Just like it says this in the Bible. I don't know if you believe in the law, but I do. It's easier for a camel to get through the eye of needle than for a rich man to get to heaven. And I think it's because they look down on the little man. And they don't matter how they get their money, as long as that bottom line is good and that stock go up. But one, <clears throat> one thing that I want to say is this. They say that the love of money is the root of all evil. But if it happened and Paul had to shut the doors, that is real evil. And that's all I have to say. Any questions for Mr. Exxon? All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Patricia Settle. Ma'am, if you would, please give us your name and address. I'm Patricia Settle. I live at 1398 Highway 29 Business, and I also live at 314 Holdery Street. So I have two addresses. This letter came to Holdery Street, but I live on 29. I exit and enter 29 when I go down that highway. It's pretty busy, and it's very busy out there. Something that's very, very clear to me right now Many years ago, there was an 18-wheeler that hit that house that I'm living in right now, and it was rebuilt. So that makes it personal to me, the proposed uh, zoning to build a Dollar General store. When I hear him talk about uh, the truck would be coming in late at night or early in the morning, what time does anyone sleep in a residential area when you have all of that business out there? There is a blind spot coming down 29. And when you turn, I'm hoping I can get into my driveway pretty fast or get out of my driveway pretty fast so no one would hit me when I come out. It is family-owned property. We've been there over 60 years. And don't plan on leaving. So um, my, and then there's young children in our family that always play in the yard. And we like for them to continue there. And there's been other accidents that we've witnessed on 29. We want to remain residential do not want Dollar General in that area. And uh, of course, as they said, there's Dollar Generals everywhere else. And I thank you for this consideration. Any I questions for uh, Ms. Settle? Thank you, ma'am. Paul Pulliam. My name's uh, Paul Pulliam. 1499 US 29 business. I run the convenience store right there past the fork. Been there 43 years. Uh, I got a lot of customers in here that are here for me tonight. We don't need any more Dollar Generals in the regional. There's enough. I take my help good. They stay with me. Dollar General doesn't pay their help good. Most of them's in the seven dollars and seven to eight dollar range. I pay a lot more than that to my clerks. And uh, these customers, this is going to be right on top of them. It's probably six or seven houses around there that's going to be right on top of them. They're my customers. They don't want it. It's obvious why I don't want it. I'm in. Pretty much the same kind of business. And uh, 
if Dollar Generals keep popping up, there won't be any mom and pop stores anymore. They'll all go, go away. And I appreciate your time. Okay, hold on, sir. Any questions? I have a question. Uh, Mr. Pulliam, how yes. close is your business establishment to this proposed site? Right beside it, right past the Mesmer Church Road beside it. So you'd say yards, maybe? Um, Ma'am. Less than, less than, yard, about how many yards if you? Well, from the point of that uh, triangle there, my property, my property is right across from that triangle right okay. there. And it goes on up business 29. How long have you been in business, sir? 43 years. Thank you. Thank you. Steve McCain. For the record, if you'd please state your name and address. My name is Steve McCain. Address is 181 Speedway Drive. Thank you. And what is it that you'd like the planning board to know? Um, I am against this. I have, uh, I've been here for about 40 years. I live across 29. My property backs up to Miss Settle's property. This young lady behind me has a mobile home that'll be directly behind where this proposed site is. It's right beside of it. I'm sure she doesn't want to be woke up at 10 o'clock at night with just regular customers coming in and out. Now, my mother worked for Dollar General up in Virginia until she just retired. She said it was one of the worst places she's ever worked. Low pay, part-time employees, very, very few full-time employees. And the part-time employees wound up basically being enslaved to the company itself because you don't pay them enough so they basically have to shop there at your store. So it's a cycle that just perpetuates. That money doesn't come back into Rockingham County. That money goes where? Tennessee. Your developer here, he's not gonna be getting these uh, local people to build this place. He's already said that. The only people's probably gonna be local is Chandler, and we know that's just because concrete sets up so fast. Okay. Here we are talking about a businessman, like, I, like he said, he's been here 40 some years. He pays his clerks better. He retains his employees longer. I know most of those people on a first name basis. What do we need, again, I'm sure you've already heard it enough, what do we need another Dollar General for, store for? Three miles away, there's one up the road. If I can drive to that one, I can drive three miles up the road to the other one. It's in a business district. It's not coming in to change your residential lifestyle in order to plop down a business. And whether we all want to admit it or not, most of the time when you put in a Dollar General store, the first thing you just did was tattooed your town as, hey, we're giving in. You want to say, hey, okay, yeah, we've lost a tobacco company. We've lost a few other large companies. But right up the road, we've got an industrial site. Seems to be thriving pretty good. We've got Pella that's come in. We've got All Bad that's over there. We've got more companies looking at our area. Why do you want to trade a 40 year old business for one that's multi-million, billions, has over 16,000 stores nationwide, bigger than McDonald's? You want to put another one of these in where all your money goes right back to corporate office in Tennessee and shareholders? Whereas this man, when he pays his employees, they shop local. That money stays right here. The tax base that he's paying, do you think you're really going to get it out of these guys? Or are they going to come and ask you for an incentive? Do they want you to incentivize <coughs> them putting in another store? Do they want you to cut their power bills a little bit, their utility cost? You're going to widen the road there? Sure. There's still people flying up and down that road. I've lived there, like I said, for over 40 years. I know what the traffic's like. Do I want a Dollar General store there? No. I see enough of this junk and hear enough of it from my back porch. You can see my house from that spot on 29. I don't want headlights shining in my house at 10 o'clock at night just because somebody just wanted to come in and pull in and sit down for a little while. You have one minute. Go ahead. You know, this, this, there's several articles 
I'll be glad to forward them to you guys. But these articles come from well-known, well-known, established uh, newspapers, The Guardian, Huffington Post, Washington Post, ProPublica, Forbes. Every one of these are negative articles. Talking about the crime increase, property values decreasing. What benefit does it have for Rockingham County to have their property values of the residential area decrease just so you can have a business in there? It does no good. You're robbing from Peter to pay Paul. So again, I'm totally against it. I see no reason for it. It's just, let's flood the market. Let's throw one on every corner. I see, I see what it looks like in Thailand. I've been there. I've been to countries all over this world. But when you see a 7-Eleven every 50 feet, nobody's making any money except for 7-Eleven. So show me how that helps Rockingham County at all. I'm sorry, sir, but you're out of time. That's fine. Any questions for Mr. McCain? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Richard Bratton. He's in another room. Oh. Right, right. Did we send a runner? Second. Is the deputy there? Yeah, he's going good. Okay, thank you. Good evening, sir. Good if evening. you would, please state your name and address. My name is Richard Bratton. I live at 282 Wheeler Road. And what is it that you'd like the planning board to know about this application? My property also runs over to Mesbah Church Road in two places. One of them is directly, I have an entrance directly across from where they plan on putting the Dollar General store. Um, my daughter, Miranda, she lives, y'all just heard what they had to say. Uh, it's a concern about the issue altogether. You have a, a business, it's a three generation business, a store already there. Uh, what are we gonna do with these people? What are we gonna do with Paul Quill? I remember his daddy, I remember his mama, I remember him and his kids running the store. They sell about anything. Um, and I'd hate to see this minimum wage paying store with no benefits that's going to have what the man say, eight, eight employees at the max on minimum wage. Um, I'd hate to see this happen and shut Paul put him down. He's a great guy. He's got a lot of people that back him. Um, the next issue I have is they said the dumpsters and stuff is going to be in the back. I think that if, and hope not, if they build the store, I think that they ought to have to put up at least an eight foot chain link fence and a buffer to keep the wind, cause it goes downhill, from blowing the trash all over everybody's yard, all the neighbor's yard, cause it's downhill from all the neighbors. Miss Stanley, the Brookses, Miranda, my yard, and Jessica up the street right there. So yeah. I think that ought to be in consideration. I do not think that it ought to be a driveway put in off of the Mesba Church Road, because there is a water issue. There has always been a water issue. I used to live in Miranda's house. I built that house. I still live on that farm. That is part of that farm. That is an issue. That is a big issue. It washes the gravel out to this day when it's a hard rain. Um, the next thing I would like to know is, is when they talk about widening the road, whose property are they going to take up? Whose land are they going to consume taking, widening a road out? It's going to be the other people's land. It's not going to be Dollar General because they can't get all of this land out of that little spot. Uh, and it's already numerous amounts of wrecks. 
If y'all will look at police reports, it's numerous amounts of wrecks every year in that stretch because like one other lady said, it is a blind spot. It is wrecked continuously in that area. People fly up and down that road. I, I just, I, I mean, if I want to go to the Dallas General Store, I can walk to the very next one. I don't have to drive. I mean, it's just right down the street. I, and the cemetery. They say it's not anybody buried there. I just talked to my dad today. He's not in good enough shape to come to this meeting. He says that he remembers the babies being buried there. The lady that's directly behind the, the, the place where y'all, they want to do it, her husband has passed away. I recall going over, when I lived in Miranda's house, the house that I built, when I went over there and talked with him, that conversation was brought up many times about those kids being buried right there in that cemetery. So why do we want to, to disturb those? Another thing is, when I was living in this house that Miranda lived in, we come to the county numerous of times to ask him to clean this trailer park up because it looked like crap. Never could get done. Now if a Dollar General store owners of the land would like to clean it up, that would be great. But I do not see any point of putting a Dollar General store there to hurt a business, to hurt the residents, and take up their land for these turning lanes. I, 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 I see no reason for it. And if I pick this trash up, I'm going to take it straight to their front door and I'm going to chunk it right there. And I'm going to lay something on it. And they can trip on it coming in and out. I don't care what to do. But I don't think that it's right for me to have to pick it up and do something with it. And I'm just telling you straight up. I have not been to no business that is a store. No business that is a store. They might keep the parking lot clean, but when people come out of the store, they take their items out of a bag, chunk it on the ground, the wind catches it, and takes it everywhere. They're not going to go out to the employees. Them $7 hour employees is not going to go out and pick that garbage up. And it don't stuck is where? Right across the road. And my grandkids, I don't want my grandkids getting ran over from the traffic. They need to put a thing out there and, and, and monitor that track and see how much traffic goes up and down Mesba Church Road. I mean, it, it is a real concern. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Brown? All right, thank you, thank sir. You. Ms. Todd? I'm sorry, I couldn't read your first name. It's Sierra. Sierra, okay. Yes. Well, that, please, for the record, give us your name and address. My name is Sierra Todd. I live at 294 Wheeler Road, apartment one um, in Reedsville, North Carolina. Um, I live on a family farm that was bought in 1973, and it joints up to Miranda Anderson's house. So it's that whole family farm. And um, we have looked at building a house which is diagonal from where the Dollar General would be placed. And um, I myself, when I, I've been to a Dollar General maybe twice my whole entire life, and every time I've ever went in there, there's maybe two people working or maybe one, just depending on that day, I guess. And um, when you walk in, there's trash everywhere. You never see that store kept maintained, whether it be the inside, the outside, anything like that. And why would I want to pay my taxes in an area where I have to look at that every day. And then say if I, if our family farm, if we wanted to cut that piece out and sell that land elsewhere to someone else, would you buy that? Would anybody else buy that? I, I don't see that happening. And so the value of the farm would decrease due to that family general in my eyes. 
and we have looked into putting like a sunflower field and making it a photography farm to where we could have people come in and enjoy the scenic area of Misba Church Road, that entrance area. So why would I have photographers come into Misba Church Road and have a sunflower field and all these beautiful flowers, but yet they're looking at a dumpster of a Dollar General? I don't think that makes a pretty background at all. And it just goes into a fa the whole entire point of why is it being put in a residential area? So why would I, if I, like he said, if, if I wanted to go to a Dollar General, all I have to do is just get in the, I can walk, literally. We can walk, we can bike, we can do whatever we got to do because it's right down the road. So why would I want to take away from a small business like the Pulliam store and put that there when it's losing your mom and pop stores when that's, that's what Rockham County is. It's a small rural country area in my eyes. So why would I take away from those mom and pop places and give it to a store that doesn't maintain or control what happens within that store? And so if you want to put a Dollar General, I wish that you could reconsider putting it somewhere else as if off the highway somewhere. If, you, if that's what you wanted to do, bring that business off of 29, if it was land off of business, you, like Highway 29, rather it be Business 29 right there where you have all of your residential houses right in that area. I think it just makes it a sore thumb. It creates um, added traffic, just like they used to call Misba Church Road Black Snake Road because of the curves and the deaths that it has created on that road. So if that's already an issue, why make it a larger issue in whole? And just like the whole thing with picking up trash. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to disrespect anybody in any way, but if I'm picking up trash from Dollar General, then are they going to pay me minimum wage as well to pick up their trash and their issues that are going on? I don't think so. So why would I want that in my area when I have to pick up their trash and do what, what they're are supposed to be maintaining? And like, I think that when we have proposals put out and like everything sounds oh high and dandy and great and whatever, but they don't live here. They, they're here to build it and move on to their next project. It's not like they're here using Rockingham County workers, using their own land. This is, they're coming in to build and then they're moving on to their not next project. It's not like they're keeping tabs on the area that they have built. And so I'm against it 100%. And that's all. Any questions for Ms. Todd? Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> that concludes the speakers in opposition to this application. So at this time, one, we'll one ask. More, one I'm more sorry. call. Shall I read this? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Carrie. I forgot all about that. We do have one more. Uh, objection that was sent in. Can't be six feet from this. <laughs> Deborah Herbins representing the Bell heirs of 1387 US 29. Family opposes rezoning because of concerns regarding increased traffic of potential crime. Family members already have a difficult time entering US 29 business from their driveway. They are concerned a commercial <coughs> store will only increase that difficulty. They want to know if a turn lane or a stoplight will ever be required. They are also worried people who do not have money for their purchase, uh, they're worried that people who do not have money for their purchases will look to nearby neighboring properties for money. Um, this was submitted by telephone today. And you also have a written copy. Yes, thank <clears throat> you. you. Mr. Almazan, this is your time for rebuttal, sir. You have thank five you. minutes. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, let's see. Just uh, what I'm going to do is summarize because th th there's a lot of consistency in all of the remarks, and, and so I'll ch try to address those. Uh, like. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson and and uh, I believe Mr. Uh, Branton that 
one of the things that they were talking about is runoff on the property and and one of the things that's required is is that we actually handle any runoff in the property uh, and maintain it and so that's that's a, a job for our engineer and that's also required by by DEQ so we have a soil and erosion permit and that's that's something that they they actually monitor and, and make sure that we don't create a runoff problem uh, in terms of traffic and I think everybody touched on traffic on the one hand there's no question about it that we generate traffic and there's traffic already existing and so the question is is that uh, you know whenever the county is looking at these areas and they designate these plans and they realize that there's traffic in the area um, do you take the recommendations of staff and the planning uh, that's gone behind it and, and looking at these areas that are high, high traffic areas are they going to grow are we going to stop growth and and kind of segueing in that's that's obviously one of the reasons why we looked at this area it does have traffic to support a commercial development it's got uh, and, and in terms of why stores are located where that they are we you know they t typically service well, within about a two-mile radius and so we, we don't find that people travel a long way to go to a Dollar General and that's why you see them uh, every so couple, uh, you know uh, frequently every so couple of miles uh, I know that trash trash seemed to also be a, a big concern I know that uh, we would have a six-foot opaque fence that would border between us and the neighboring neighboring residential property in order to keep keep people from going through there keep if, there's, if there was any trash we also put an opaque fence around our dumpster and and one thing that's important is is that Dollar General is a tenant to us we actually own the property and just like any landlord and you see this with re with rental property residential rental property if the landlord allows their tenants to destroy their property or to to have it dirty and don't keep them accountable then it will look terrible and that's one of the things I have gone into stores that that we own and I've talked to managers I've talked to district managers and I've had those opportunities in, in order to make sure that we keep our properties clean but but it is a matter of accountability and I mean like I hate that some stores don't don't do a great job but we make sure that we we do uh, I mean like we take pride in the stores that we've got um, let me see if anything let me see if anything else I mean like I appreciate all the support that I hear for Paul's business the convenience store down the street and I realize that in any case nobody likes competition <coughs> but I do find that in a lot of stores that we've located near existing convenience stores that have been there for many years they find that they they adjust their uh, inventory a little bit they're always able to carry some things that we don't and we're not going to and so they find their niche they're going to still have their their uh, their core clientele that's not going to change and and I'm just hoping that you know in terms of the board you're looking at the appropriateness of the site and seeing that that we meet those criteria we're going to put in a turn lane in order to to take some of that traffic uh, or alleviate those concerns coming into the store and we we lean on DOT to make that decision in terms of layout and appropriateness and we're required to get that <coughs> DOT permit before we can get a driveway so if there's any other questions I'd be glad to answer them any questions yes sir If I'm not mistaken, we're it's we're absorbing the like the 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 increase of the right of way is going to be in, uh, incurred on our property, and so we're dedicating that to DOT. The, the one piece of this application that I don't understand is that that the notch for the cemetery, mm -hmm. and I don't understand how you can can add a lane if if it's right in the middle of your property is that cemetery. It's, it's Derek, do you have a, I'm going to let Derek answer that question. Okay. 
So, so the, the right of way there is not is pretty significant in general. So any any widening that would take place would take place within that right of way and the additional property from the uh, uh, from the developer. And the way I, the way I understand it is, uh, no no graves will be impacted by this. Uh, and I think the owners are here that can speak to that as well. But uh, my understanding is that there's no actual graves will be impacted by this. Thank so. you. Discussion? Carrie, is public water and sewer on site here? Water, yes, I'm not sure about septic. I don't think they'll have an on-site wastewater system. Yeah, no reasonable doesn't come out that far. According to the packet, uh, water and sanitary sewer are on site. I guess that means a well. That's it. That's just an error then on our part. But um, yeah, just just water is available. On-site wastewater system is what the packet says. Yes, sir. I'll just make the observation that there, it looks like there are three highly commercial parcels directly across the street. I don't know if those are being used or what sort of use they're being put to the current building. Just from the zone perspective, that would make this seem to be a program. Do we know what the what the other businesses are? We know I, I Mr. Don't. Pulliam has a convenience store. There's a speedway. Yeah. Uh, I, let me. I can bring the zoning map back up, but I don't know if um, if those are currently developed for that use. If they're not, they could they're be. Not developed, and they were. This was rezoned in 2015. Thank you. So the um, that means that those properties just have that potential use and I don't think they're conditional zoning districts so they would have a wider variety of um, potential uses mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't look at the um, site plan yet to see if there is additional buffering I know that I know mr. Amazon mentioned the fence but I didn't I did not see what sort of additional landscape buffering there might be beyond the UDO did you offer anything like that, Daniel? No, you could. It's a template type of three buffer. Okay. I'm sorry. Would you like to hear from Mr. Pulliam about which businesses are in use yeah, uh, in the area I wasn't able to answer your question but mr. it might be helpful yes mr. Pulliam yes <clears throat> if you could kind of take us through what the other businesses are that are well um, in that area there's none 
uh, pa up past me, north of me, there's a um, a body shop. Auto repair. Huh? Auto repair. Yeah, well, it's a body shop. Okay. It's uh, it's north of that area. And where's the speedway at? The speedway's closed. It's gone. Oh, it's it is. New. You know, it's been out of gone a long time ago. Okay. Yeah. I did. I do have one question. Uh, this property used to be a service station, and I just wonder if the tanks were taken out of the ground and it was done properly, if there's a record of that, because I know there was buried tanks there. Well, once once a site plan is submitted, there's a process um, undertaken by a group of people called the Technical Review Committee and they scrutinize every aspect of the site plans. There's a representative on this committee, for example, from NCDOT, well, Soil and Converse, uh, Conservation, D -E Environmental. <coughs> Envir Department of Environmental Quality, the North Carolina Department of Environmental yeah. Quality, and they're the folks that monitor, that would regulate those tanks. I understand that there is some documentation about them, and I've already asked for that. About the tanks in the ground? Yes, sir. About the, oh, yeah. the disposition of the tanks. What year was that? I've, I understand there's information and I've asked for it. That's as much as I know right now. I know so I'll be asking to I know validate they were it. dug out of the ground on a Christmas Eve. I know that. I saw it. Yeah. So I just, I just wondered if it was done properly. There'll be documentation. Yes, sir. Can we clarify what the LI wanting at the bottom of the purple is? Thank you. Light, the light industrial? Yeah, yeah and HI, <coughs> I think that the heavy industrial is actually the, um, Mr. Pulliam's, yeah. I think that Mr. Pulliam's store is zoned he how, uh, heavy industrial. Members, <clears throat> do we have a motion on this application? I'm sorry? Do we have an opportunity to rebut anything like, the, uh, like they, they got an opportunity to do? Uh, it, it, it isn't really in the protocol of the planning board to do that. I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Mr. Chair. The Planning Board has reviewed the Highway Commercial Conditional District Zoning Amendment and adopts the following statements as required by NCGS 153A-341 and 153A-342. After considering Rockingham County adopted comprehensive plan, the Planning Board recommends denial of case number 2020-21. This action is not consistent with the adopted Rockingham County Land Use Plan. This zoning amendment does not support the intent to describe an urban transition land class. The board does not consider the adoption of the proposal zoning, proposed zoning amendment to be reasonable because the proposed use is not appropriate for the land considered its effect upon the entire community as a social, economic, and political unit. The size of the parcel is not appropriate for the land request and for the district requested the property for the request of butts properties that are currently zoned residential agricultural. The board does not consider the adoption of the proposed zoning amendment to be in the public interest because the proposed development does not have sufficient design features so as to be compatible or exceed the quality of existing developments in the neighborhood. The uses permitted in Highway Commercial Desk Conditional District do not have similar impacts as to the surrounding uh, residentially zoned properties 
This would potentially impose significant harm to the neighbors and surrounding communities. The proposed rezoning is not designed to meet or exceed all requirements of the goals that existed in the UDO and the co comprehensive plan and on balance. Um, the following factor size attract to the um, qu in question compatibility of the zoning action with the comprehensive plan. The benefits and detriments revolt resulting from zoning action for the owner of the newly permitted property, the neighbors and surrounding community, and the relationship between the envisioned permitted uses and the use currently present to in, in adjacent tracts weigh in favor of. Uh, do not weigh in favor. Do I'm not sorry, weigh yeah. in favor of approving the proposed zoning amendment. Is there a second to that motion? Motion has been made and seconded to deny this application <coughs> for rezoning. All those in favor of this motion, please signify by raising your right hand. Those opposed, like sign. The application is denied on the four to three vote. This um, case will be heard by the Board of Commissioners for final decision. So you've recommended denial to the Board of Commissioners. And what is the date of the next um, commissioner's meeting? Sorry, that, that I'm not quick be? enough on the draw. They'll be meeting on September 21st to hear this case. Okay. So, um, and any uh, public input that was made tonight ought to come there um, and be heard as well. Right, please understand that what, what's happened here is that this planning board is making a recommendation to the county commissioners that this application be denied. But the final determination is, of course, up to the county commissioners at their next meeting. Thank you all for attending. And now, where you go? <laughs> Stretching my legs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is the county commission's meeting on this? 23rd. 23rd. Yeah, to the 23rd. And I was so worried. Remember to get that. Yes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> is there any old business before the board? <laughs> New business. No old business? No. Um, yeah, new business. We have a, a training scheduled for the 24th. We have um, three special use permit cases. Emily and I are going to take a close look at how much time those might take up before we. Um, we actually have a Piedmont Triad Regional Council member coming to speak to us and give our training. And so I'm, I just want to be considerate of his time and of your time and whether we reschedule or not. But please keep that um, meeting, plan to plan to attend until I do otherwise. Same time, the same regular meeting time. It's our, it's this second meeting of the month that we always have reserved in the case that we need it. And it's the same seven o'clock time. Oh, training would be after the, after the cases. Yeah, no, not a specific um, time because of the cases. All right. <laughs> Generally speaking, Philip, the special use cases take a little longer than straight rezoning unless you get a situation like we had tonight. With, uh, I think we had 12 speakers. Uh, that's Emily's calling a timeout. <laughs> Yes, I'm going to say that. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were having, saying something about, sorry to oh, interrupt. No. I thought it was something about the, um, yeah, the, the uh, we've hired a, another planner that will start in August 18th, 17th. He starts in a week. I better get ready. Yeah. Anyway, new planner, <laughs> we're ready. Uh, new planner starts in a week. Um, his name is Tim Timothy Mack. He'll um, he'll be at the that meeting on the 24th certainly. So you'll have the opportunity to meet him at that okay. time.
land use update still going good? Land use update is still going well. We're, we're um, a first draft of the whole ordinance is about to go out to the committee. It's actually going to, for legal review today, to um, PTRC. And uh, yeah, pretty, pretty excited about it. Really, actually gonna happen in time. <laughs> may I make a motion to adjourn? You certainly may. I'm making a motion to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Stand up. The meeting is adjourned. I'm gonna give Louise pen back. Thank you for coming.